Yeah, and it's talk about a different environment for a guy. For sure. Kakadin goes from, oh, I'm going to get absolutely shelled. Every night. <laughs> Without question, I am preparing to get bodied tonight yep. and have to backstop this god-awful hockey team, too. I am. I may face 24 shots tonight. <laughs> I am one quirky thing away from starting for the Colorado Avalanche in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yep. Uh, it's a big jump. <laughs> it's a big jump. Trivia question for you. Name a hockey player whose first and last name both start with K that is not the one we're talking about in this video. Capo Cacao. Dang, you guys were all over that. You had multiple answers ready to go. <laughs> is there multiple guys? Kaprizov and Kako. Anyway, <laughs> the one we're talking about in this video is Capo Kakinen, the goaltender. Um, This one is a little bit weird for me. <laughs> I'll let Eric take it away because he's the guy who's, uh, who's about it with uh, not just goaltenders, but Kakinen specifically. E... Why does he make sense in Colorado? Um, I'll tell you why I like him. Um, years back, he spent a lot of time in uh, Iowa. A lot of ass connections there. You know, you had Alex Tangay, assistant coach, Timmy Army, head coach that was here all those years, assistant coach. He had Cody McLeod. So I spent a lot of time in Iowa, you know, when I go through my rounds. And when you make your rounds – it's easy when you know guys, especially in the American League, because there's a lot of unknowns. You don't see the prospects. You know what I mean? I'm not an amateur guy. You know, so it's so you see them once they turn pro, and and I spent a lot of time with these guys because they're my friends, right? So it's like it was easy pit stop, and then you can get a lot of info. And I remember sometimes on the road, you don't really have time to go to practice and things like that. You know, I went to a lot of practices, and I always came back impressed by this guy, his work ethic. I thought he was a good teammate, and I used to always ask Timmy about it, too, and he'd be like, no, this guy's going to play in the NHL. He's good. And um, So I've always liked him for that purpose. American League is different than the NHL. Yeah, so if you look at it, he put up some good numbers in the American League. Then he went out to the NHL, and I think he's just been in tough situations in San Jose. You know, like the team is not particularly very good. Uh, you were saying about Jake Allen, about what you face, what you give up, and I, I just feel that this is a team that – a team, this is a – a team's gonna, a team's gonna take them to get goaltending depth. And is he? Am I in love with this guy? No. Do I think it's an upgrade on what the Avs have? Yes, because of more experience. But it doesn't solve what I was saying earlier with other videos about goalies about surrounding Georgiev. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he would be down the list for me of the goalies. I would rather get a Wiley veteran like Flurry. Uh, Allen, so this is more like a stop gap. Like I just feel that I'd feel more confident going into the dance with him than Eustace or I'm in a blank right now. What I Pros 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 What I would say on it is his contract is a little bit cheaper, right? So if this is the last move you're making at the deadline, oh, we've unfortunately priced ourselves out of Flurry. Oh, we've unfortunately priced ourselves out of Allen. You can get a Kakinen for not a ton cheaper, but well, maybe you're squeezing it in once it's retained. It it would end up being what one point four million, and then our prorated it ends up being like six hundred k or something. It wouldn't be a ton. Is that even worth doing? I don't know. I might be fine with just playing it in at that point as the backup. Yeah, and it's talk about a different environment for a guy. For sure. Kakadin goes from, oh, I'm going to get absolutely shelled. Every night. <laughs> Without question, I am preparing to get bodied tonight yep. and have to backstop this god-awful hockey team, too. I am... I may face 24 shots tonight. <laughs> I am one quirky thing away from starting for the Colorado Avalanche in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yep. Uh, it's a big jump. <laughs> it's a big jump. So... It would be a really bold thing for them to decide to do right now, but also one that you could see where they said, okay, we've, we've gone really cheap at this position. We haven't liked what we've tried to do the last couple of years with Frankie. It just hasn't worked. Um, the injuries when he was healthy, we loved it, but with the injuries, it just didn't, it 
it was not something we could continue to do. So we're going to go get this guy who has mixed results as an NHL goaltender, but one that a lot of people really like. I think what he's done this year stands out as impressive because of the caliber of team that's played in front of him. His goals against average is above the league average, which sits around 3.08 this year, but his save percentage is a 905. And NHL Edge has some interesting stats for goaltenders, and one of them is a category for percentage of games above 900, and he is in the 71st percentile. And if you look at Georgiev's comparatively, it's quite rough. And so he's making saves despite a lot of traffic and a volume of shots in front of him that I think the other is the 82nd percentile for high danger saves specifically. He's doing pretty well despite some pretty bad circumstances. He's Finnish. You see Parkhala's Finnish. Now, look, so is used to sounding it, but I actually <laughs> think that hearing Presvedev talk about working with the goaltending coaches in Colorado and describing them as a navigation system for when you stray from the basics, they bring you back in. I think that he could really benefit under the tutelage of Parkala, even if it is kind of a shorter amount of time. I think they could probably really connect in a way that other goaltenders might not be able to connect with him. And he had a really great performance in front of Colorado in that December 31st game. Um, he made like 30, 30 saves. Um, Something like that. And, yeah. and finished with a 938 in that game against a good Avs team that was just peppering him. And so he's put up a good performance in front of the right eyes for that to be someone that they might be interested in, especially because of the 2.75 mil in his final year of that contract. He's like, I've seen him dominate the AHL level, but I've seen him steal games at the NHL level. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I've seen him in a different situation in games, i.e., like I said, at practices and stuff like that, interact with him. He just looks like a gamer to me. He's never played a playoff game. So it's not, I can't judge him like that, like middle stat and all those guys. Lots of projection. Just, that's what I'm saying. He just looks like a gamer to me. Um, and I said, like I said, he's got more experience than the Eustace and Rosmatov. So for me, that would be, you know, why it would be an upgrade. But would I be looking for it? No, it would be more down the list. Look, man, he's a goalie. If you see one you think's got the mojo, <laughs> why not? I agree. Well said. That's it. That's all I got. That might be the last video of the trade deadline frenzy, depending on what order we release them in. Let's be real. This is going to be one of the first ones. Most we likely. <laughs> and we're yawning and exhausted, yeah. and it's not clear why. It's, 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 we've been here for six hours. <laughs> Either way, this is part of an 11 video <laughs> playlist. If all the videos are out, make sure you check them all. Make sure you know all the possible options for the abs at the trade deadline. And then join us on deadline day for a long live where we watch it all play out and the abs not make any of these moves. So hell yeah. <laughs> we appreciate y'all like, and subscribe here on YouTube and check out the rest of the playlist. <laughs>